Well, Ardoth's been slowly walking towards the group, and as he approaches, um, Uthal will hear a voice, and only Uthal, uh, that says, Excuse me, can I get to the board, please? Uh, Uthal will stand up and probably back away, trying not to walk into anyone, saying, What? Yeah, Uzo, you try to back up, but like um, you kind of push some guy's chair, and the this uh, this half orc that's sitting in the chair behind you stands up, and he's like, "Oi, what are you doing? Trying to push me out of my chair? I'm having a nice meal here. I just was on a long journey, and then I have to deal with this. What do you think you are, some some giant? You could just come in here and push people around just because they're smaller than you." Um, he's smaller than you. He's about uh, six five, not too much smaller, like five feet smaller than you. Or uh, so, but he thinks that that's what you're trying to do is make fun of him. <clears throat> Uthal, uh, he's not really the apologizing type, so he's gonna try to intimidate this dude to back off. Oh yeah, uh, just getting up all in his face, saying, "I don't need this from you," type thing. Yeah, go go for it. I hope this works. And you are trying to intimidate him, and I think it, it's a counter to that, right? Can Boz assist? Ooh, you want to assist? Yeah. Um, sure. Roll me another intimidation, Uzal. You get advantage on it. Okay. Uh, how is Boz doing so? I believe he walks up and stands next to uh, Uthal. He's He's um, always carrying his sword in his uh, in its scabbard, like in his hand. It's not like on his hip or his back or anything. So I feel like he just kind of cuts an intimidating presence. The iron mask and the enormous sword just kind of ever present. Yeah, you get an 18. So I think he basically has to. Mm, he's going to counter with. Is intimidation because he's basically you're both trying to intimidate each other. Yep. So uh, he's gonna try to. Oh my god! I rolled so bad. How? Oh, yes. oh my god! You got a. We we have the same bonus. He has a plus two and you have a plus two. Actually, because it's charisma. Yeah, he has a plus. Like you both have the same bonus and he failed so miserably. Uh, yeah, you you tower over him and and with Boz's support, um, the 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 orc you know, realizes that you, like, maybe didn't mean to, and kind of, and his friend actually talks him down, and uh, you see this um, elf that's very calmly sitting there says, smacks him in the shoulder, or smacks him in the leg, because he's so tall, he's standing up now, smacks him in the leg and says, sit down, what are you doing? We're supposed to keep low. And he uh, pulls his cloak back over his head, and the orc is like, watch where you're going next time. And uh, sits down and uh, actually pushes his chair up against you to give himself even more room. Kind of like a jerk move. But uh, so, Uthal would probably him. note both of those two, just so he knows that there could be criminal contacts in this in this village. Yeah, so it's a, you just see an elf and an orc Okay. Um, at the table. They were sitting together. Um, there's also another elf that's sitting at the table with them, but can't tell if they're a group or not because they're not sitting quite as close. Okay. But yes, you can note that if you'd like. Um, and that uh, that threat was brought to you by Werewolf. So thank you, Werewolf, for the $30 donation. I was hoping that was going to go way worse than it did, but uh, I rolled a four, <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm like, what? Ugh. The dice have spoken. Yeah, the dice have spoken. Um, but big thank you, Werewolf. $30 towards St. Jude. You're, uh, you're doing so much to help the kids, and um, one of the greatest things about St. Jude is that none of those kids have to pay for anything. The families don't even have to pay for places to stay, food, um, anything, travel, whatever. They pay for everything. Um, yes, yeah, so you guys can continue having your conversation now uh, as Ardoth has just uh, asked for you guys to, to move out of the way for him, or for him to be able to move in. So as I see Ardoth move past me, I'm going to ask him if that was him speaking in my head. 
Uh, he doesn't even look at you, but just replies yes. Okay. This all replies. And again, in in your head. And we have another, I don't want to interrupt all this lovely RP. I keep interrupting you guys, I'm sorry. We have another donation for $15 and we're doing this in clockwork order. Uh, Werewolf, thank you so much, Werewolf. Werewolf has donated $15. So that's a total of 45 Thank you so much um, to the kids at St. Jude. And the $15 means that, Frank, you are next up in line in the counterclockwise to roll. And that is a 989. So well. I gotta go backwards and see what you got for wild magic. Um, like you've seen from the people before, uh, you can donate to affect the game and weird stuff happens. We're gonna be playing this game for the next four or five weeks, pending when they finish the campaign. We could maybe go longer than that. Um, 989. And we'll be swapping out who joins every week as well. They'll always start in the village and end in the village. 989. And Caster glows for 1d10 rounds after casting a spell. Do you even cast spells? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think you... Well, there might be a chance that you do cast a spell for some reason. I mean, I can always re-roll. <clears throat> casting a spell. So go ahead and add that to your character sheet as a thing, just in case. Down the line. Well, I know, maybe Boo. you end up... Go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Maybe you end up killing me and then have to try to revive me, and then you glow. <laughs> oh, I was going to uh, say it's not a spell, but it's uh, an ability using a key. Ooh, yeah, let's change it. Uh, we'll say player glows for 1d10 rounds after using a key point. A chi point. I always say chi, but other people have been calling it key. It's it's supposed to be chi, but okay, chi points. That's what I everyone was calls it key. So yeah, good luck, Delphine. Yeah, let's let's tr let's let's swap it up for that. There we go. I like that. You're gonna just randomly start glowing the next time. People are gonna be like, "What?" the... And you're trying to be sneaky. And you're just like, mm. oh, "That's gonna be so good." Um, I love it. All right, and uh, continue on with your conversation. I'm sorry. I think. Uh, Ardoth and Uthal were having a conversation? It, kind of. Uth, uh, Uthal was speaking out loud while Ardoth was speaking in Uthal's head. So everyone else is just confused because Uthal's having this conversation with someone who's not speaking. Yeah, have the conversation so that we can, can experience what's happening. Um, <clears throat> how did you learn of these ways to speak in one's head? How, how does one come about that? This all asks. Learn? One does not learn to speak in this way. One simply does. So if I wanted to speak in your head, I would just try to? Uthal tries to say this in his head. <laughs> Yeah, you try. Um, what are you trying to say exactly in his head? Kind of just like, hi, is this working? <laughs> yeah, so you guys are just hearing him say all these things, and he's saying it to himself. No one is talking to him. And then he's like, hi, can you understand? Can you hear me? And no. Uh, I mean, well, Ardoth can, but it's not in Ardoth, Ardoth's head. Okay. <clears throat> I think Boz is just kind of looking him up and down, like, What's happening here? Hi, oh, sounds like some uh, some freaky talking. Is it like sign language? Um, U Uthal has no explanation. He's not really sure. It's just uh, he says words are in my head. They speak to me. Are you sure you're not just thinking it? No, these are not my own thoughts. He had to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an intelligence of eight, so. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. think <laughs> Band turns towards Ardoth. Is like, is he just thinking, or are you speaking without speaking? And Ardoth will actually say out loud this time.
speech is important sometimes. Well, that's how you communicate. Unless you're like an animal, then there's other ways of communication, but that's not the point. So he's not crazy, or he is crazy? <laughs> Maybe they're both crazy. And Vand will hear a reply in his head. I don't know. Are you crazy? Am I? Is anyone? Is everyone? Which a yes, actually. Yeah. Uh, Vand, as you're standing there and you're talking to him, um, your eyes roll back and everyone can see this. Um, and uh, you're silent. Um, but foam is coming out of your mouth and you guys are, can all see this. And Vand, what you're seeing behind your eyes is um, flashes of something. Um, it's a grave. It's dirt, there's a shovel, and then you come back. So you, like, fall into Uthal? No, kind of he's still standing by. Uh, he comes back and his eyes, eyes come to, and uh, he's, like, like licking his lips because there's drool kind of coming from it, and he, like, <clears throat> kind of wipes it off, and you come to. What's band has what rabies? That for? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uthal asks, "Are you okay, little one?" Oh, this... he just tried to do something in my head. Hmm. Uh, band, you've been actually having things like this happen a lot to you. Uh, these oh, okay. are the daydreams that have been happening to you. I mean, intelligence is my dump stat, so. What was that? Intelligence is my dump stat, so... Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, he just spoke in my head, I immediately had a seizure. <laughs> yeah. It, it does have the same feeling as the other things that have been happening to you, since they've been happening for so long. Um, even with a low intelligence, like, you would you would still recognize that uh, this is a thing that has been happening to you. Has it happened when someone casts a spell at me before? No. It usually just happens randomly. Van slowly starts to draw his hand axe. It's like, are you evil? You muted. Yeah. Um... He's like, how do I answer this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, warlock. So he's a, he's yes. a fiend of oh. some sort. Because you're. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, you're a half elf, right? So, yeah, yeah, but you're a warlock, so you've kind of sold yourself to somebody. Wow! Oh man! It doesn't mean he Hold has. Hold on! To be. Before you answer that, roll me a one d ten thousand. Thank you, werewolf, for the another fifteen dollars. Let's get some good rolls. Do a good one for us. Just waiting for a level five fireball cast on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Are you evil? Fireball. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be amazing. 6,710. Alright, gotta get to the 6,000. Evil? No, not a. And, ooh, lost it. 6,710. Target's home is made of sodium and it's starting to rain. Um, since you don't really have a home, I think the inn is the place that, uh, is your home right now, technically. Um, yeah, it starts raining, and you guys hear, uh, this pounding of rain that's happening, and, um, the, the walls, or the ceiling of the inn starts, f like, the be the middle of it starts falling down, and, uh, what is this? Um, you you can feel like the rain touching your your skin, and it kind of tastes salty. Um, and the whole in <laughs> great, the whole in starts uh, falling apart. 
I've got a as question. You, as you're going to answer, Ardoth. Does it say sodium answer. or salt? It says sodium. Which it says is, sodium. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, a, I'm just learning to become a geologist. So sodium actually will explode with contact in water. Yep. Oh, shit. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. The whole... <laughs> We're going to say that the ceiling is made out of sodium, not the whole in, because we need the in to be somewhat intact. That would be nice. But yeah. Okay. So the ceiling, it, you start hearing rain pounding on the, on, the, on the ceiling of the inn, and all of a sudden, the whole roof of the inn just explodes. Um, there's, uh, I'm going to need everyone to roll me a deck save. Um, and if you get advantage to that, like, tell me what you, why you get advantage. The whole ceiling explodes. There's uh, chips flying everywhere. Um, there's people throwing up tables to shield them. There's other people who have shields who are using them to shield them. Uh, there's people who are ducking under cover. There's people, there's some halflings who have jumped underneath a table to take cover. Um, <laughs> looks like uh, Vand, um, you actually uh, hide behind um, Uthal, who Uthal grabs a a the table that was that was in front of him where that half orc or that orc and the um, the elf were. You actually steal their table from them, pull it up, and shield you. And um, fortunately, Vand is just behind you, and so he gets cover, and uh, that gives you guys enough cover where the the table itself expl- like gets a bunch of shit on it and it actually breaks in half, but you're still you're still holding the two halves together. Um, Uthal, uh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that works. Um, and then Baz, oh, poor Baz. Um, we'll start with Ardoth, because you're probably, um, you're standing in front, like, more closer to the center. Um, a bar stool comes and just smacks you in the head, and you are going to take, I mean, it's not a lot of damage. I'm gonna roll. You're gonna take six damage, and um, Baz, as uh, as um, Ardoth gets hit in the head and kind of like falls, and you're you're not prone, Ardoth. Uh, as you get knocked prone and, and this thing hits your head, um, it actually bounces and it like trips you and you actually fall down, Baz, and you're gonna take some damage as you fall. Not as much. Um. Well, he didn't roll in that one on the save, so. You are going to take five damage. Um, and that's what happens, so, and there's a bunch of people now, like, explosions over, uh, there's ringing in everyone's ears, and, uh, I think the, the first two people to really react are gonna be Vand and Uthal, since you guys didn't, you guys were fine. <clears throat> so, first thing Uthal is gonna do once everything's kinda stopped is he's gonna put the table that's left of it back down where it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, you put the table down, and it sits for a moment, and then it just, like, and it, like, folds in and, like, is, like, sitting there, like, like a V in the middle of the floor. Uthal is just like, oops. <laughs> oops. <laughs> nice. Uh, Vand, what about you? Uh, Vand is, he probably now has his hand axe all the way out. Um, the evil warlock is on the ground, correct? He's currently, well, who you think is evil, um, maybe, perhaps. Ardoth, he didn't say whether he was evil or not, but yeah. He the is, one who just blew up the building. He's knocked uh, kind of on the, he, he got hit in the head with a chair, and you saw all of it. He got hit in the head with the chair, and now is laying on the ground. Um, I'm not sure if he's unconscious or not. You'd have to make, like, a medical check to see if he is or not, but um, he appears to, to be laying on the ground. Yeah, just going to make a a chair that's, like, on top check. of his head. See if he's. Are you gonna roll a medical check? Yep. Yeah, you you look over and he, he seems alive. You could see his like uh, chest rising and falling. Um. So because you know I'm a monk and obviously can't kill him without due process. Um, just gonna put the blade of the hand axe like up to his throat. Uh, be like, hi. 
tried to kill us because I called you evil. Well, that just means you're really evil. Yeah, so you see this halfling uh, standing over you. He's got his leg on your chest, and he's got a blade to your throat. He's knocked the chair that, like, hit you in the head over, so it's, like, it's off your face now, um, and he's, like, holding a blade to you. Um, and as, as Vanda's saying that, uh, Baz, you can now uh, react as well. Um, you, just got, you just got tripped by a chair. Yeah, I think he picks himself up, and he's looking around for the cause of the explosion like i think and he goes on. outside pause for a moment uh, -oh. uh we're gonna have uthal roll me a 1d ten thousand. werewolf has donated another 15 dollars to make another uh magic wild magic happen thank you so much werewolf this is pretty great we haven't even left the town yet and they're already killing each other uh 6524 we're in the 6,000s today. This is like where we're chilling. 524. All right. See it here. It is. Target vanishes, leaving a worthless treasure map in his place. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh my god, that's great. As you go to stand up, you 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 like stand up, you catch yourself and um all of a sudden, you guys all see um Uthal disappear and a piece of paper that is a part a piece of parchment that's brown and and syringed at at its edges slowly floats to the ground. I have an idea, Uthal, so just like hang out for a little bit. <laughs> okay. That is amazing, werewolf. What did you just cause? Um, I assume all we, right. we all see he's disappeared. Yeah, I just told you what you saw. He's a big figure. Um, Band immediately like, turns towards the paper, like, absent mindedly takes the axe away from uh, the warlock's neck, runs over to the. <laughs> what did you do to him? At this point, I think Ardoth's starting to come round. Uh, he's, he's blinking quite a lot, and he just gestures from the floor to encompass the whole tavern and, and says, actually says out loud, that, all of that, was not me. What about this? You turned log legs into a map! I do not know how to do that. Ben kind of just pauses for a moment. It's like, are you sure? Are you trying to inside him? No, he's just like, are, are, are you sure you don't know how to do that? Because he's a map now. Obviously someone does, but not me. He's frowning and he's, he's thinking about it, and it's. Do I know anyone who knows how to do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, roll me a history check. You've ever heard of somebody turning something into a map? No. Um, you don't know anyone personally who has turned someone into a map. But you know of spells that have turned things into other objects. Um, this is something that happens. Um, sometimes you can dispel them. Uh, so casting light dispel magic sometimes can uh, change change whatever effect has happened uh, on somebody. Um, there are also some uh, really high level spells that can change somebody into something and leave them like that permanently. Um, usually they're only like that for a certain amount of time um, and it dissipates. Uh, it just depends on the level of, of which the spell is. Um, and in some cases you can't change them uh, back or not. <laughs> uh, everyone always sees me look up and they're like, oh no, another thing. 
Stand alone. Can you roll me a 1D10,000? Werewolf has just donated another $15 to the kids of St. Jude. Thank you so much. If you guys don't know, uh, while he's rolling that, you can look over to the right of me. You can see a whole bunch of stuff that you can um, provide the players and affect the game. We've already had madness ensue. They haven't even gotten to their quest line. They've decided to take the quest to go get the things, but they haven't been able to. 9,754. I think the higher ones do more, so... Oh, good. See what this one is. I, I think they get more dangerous the higher they are. 9,000, and that's pretty high. 9,754. Suddenly a Tarask appears. Uh, 9,754 is. Right. Next fire started in area opens a gate to elemental fire. Ooh, that's on me. I will hold on to that. Summons, uh, starts, in, uh, next fire started. Okay. Uh, opens a gate to elemental fire. That means I need to get some elemental fires stuff in here, which I did a lot of on Monday. <laughs> uh, let me make a note to myself about that. Let's save it. Cool. Good to know. I like it. Uh, proceed. Well, I think Boz was running to go outside to check if we were being hit by, like, artillery or something, but... After that, I think he's looking at the people in the inn. See if that, I don't know, if anyone looks like they're doing magic-y things. Uh, yeah, you look around. Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, I can do that. I almost always hit performance instead. <laughs> the 10. Um, yeah, you look around and you see uh, people picking up tables, moving chairs. Um, the barkeep is like um, tr directing like some uh, some barmaids, and they're like running around grabbing things. Um, uh, he's actually pulling down some stuff from the shelves and trying to sweep some things up. You see um, a few people uh, picking up their gatherings and like leaving the inn. Um, and then there's other people who have gotten up and they've gone down that hallway that you saw when you guys first entered. It was kind of like way in the back. Um, and yeah, you just see kind of people like moving around and, and whatnot. <laughs> Nate, Nate is still a map. <laughs> uh, I think Baz is holding... No, no, no. Baz Vand is holding on to him. <laughs> That's what you see. All right. I guess I I don't really see anyone particular in here that looks suspicious. I I guess I look outside to see if there's anything weird there, which yeah. I think we know there isn't, but Boz doesn't. Yeah, you go outside. Um Baz, you go outside and um, there's like parts of the roof that are like all over the ground. Uh, some of it has hit other buildings and has like shattered windows. Um, there's people that were inside of their own homes or inside of their shops who have now got out of their shops and they're looking down the street because they're like, what? There was just a huge explosion. Um, and you you look into the middle of the street and there's there's something laying on the ground it's it's sparkling and shiny um and the water from the rain because it's raining still um is like pouring down um and all of a sudden the rain just stops and there's this tiny puddle of water and something shiny in it Buzz cautiously walks closer to it to see what's making it so shiny um are you trying to like look at it before you get close before you like touch it or before you get too close to it yeah probably definitely before I touch it um 
I guess you can either roll me like an arcana, a perception, maybe either one one of those would work. Probably perception because uh, okay. I'm I'm okay at that one. You'll just get different information depending on what you roll. Makes yeah. sense. So a fifteen. Um, yeah, you're you're not quite close enough to it, but you like you're looking at it from a distance, and the water in this puddle has, is kind of covering it a bit. You think what's causing it to be shiny is uh, the material that it's made out of. It looks like it might be made out of like. Uh, mithril or something and the light's just hitting it barely um and it's uh it's shining as the light's hmm. hitting it just sitting in the middle of the stream uh i think that he like pokes his head back into the tavern and uh looks over towards uh ardoth and says Spell thrower. Magic. And points over his shoulder towards where the thing is. Ardoff starts standing up at this point and just shrugs. He makes like a come here gesture. Oh, you gotta be careful with this one. Can't let them out of your sight. The man just starts following uh, Ardoth. Yeah, so Ardoth will wander over and, and have a look and see if he can work out what it is. Um, are you going to pick up the item or are you going to look at it from uh, a distance? Look at it. Um, probably getting fairly close to it, just not actually picking it up until I have a clear idea of what it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, give me an arcana or a um, a a perception check. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea what that is. Yeah, you're you're not sure what that is. It's shiny. It looks like there's something that's. It's covered, like, kind of covered by water. Or by water, it uh, it's a thing. That's like you'd have to get up to it to really um, know what it is, I suppose. Yeah, Ardoth will just shrug again, standing over it, looking at it. Hmm. Is this what you use to blow up the roof and turn our friends into the map? I did not do that. Prove it. <laughs> well, this is evidence then. We'll have to find a uh, constable. And uh, Van goes over and goes to pick the thing up. Yeah. Uh, Van, you go into the water. Uh, you pick up this item. And before you, as you're picking it up, roll me a 1d10,000. <laughs> Werewolf has just uh, donated fifteen dollars for another wild magic, and then I'll tell you what the item is. Maybe four thousand three hundred and thirteen. Four thousand three hundred and thirteen. Hold on. Sorry, I have to like scroll through it. Four thousand three hundred thirteen. Earthen wall, earthen wall d4 feet thick, d12 feet high, and circles the target. You go, this is actually really cool. You go down and you pick up the thing in the water. As you put your hands in the water, the earth around you rumbles, and this wall of thick earth comes up into the air. Uh, roll me a 1d4. It's four uh, feet thick, and roll me a 1d12. And eight feet high, that's insane. And eight feet high, and it just encircles you. And what you guys see is this circle of earth, just this conal sphere comes up out of the ground and uh, encompasses and locks um, your little halfling uh, acquaintance into this. Um, and as you put your hand down in there, Vange, you pick up out of the water 
a giant great sword. You can barely lift it. It doesn't like you can't even pick it up yourself. Um, it sparkles in in the in the light, even though you're in in darkness around this earth. That was pretty cool. I would argue that, that was like that perfect timing, I like perfect super sick. Oh my god, what? I would argue that I can't because I have thirteen strength. <laughs> oh, if you th yeah. Um, let me see. Hold on. What the proficiency? I just don't have intelligence. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, you might. Yeah, you can maybe pick it up. Help! Long legs. He's trapped me in here. I think Buzz takes like a step back and kind of pivots towards Ardoth and points at him and says, Nope. And he looks at the, the wall. Ardoth just shakes his head. <laughs> Thank you, Rage Strike, for uh, gifting Stay Hydrated Bot a, uh, a tier one subscription. Stay Hydrated Bot is finally one of us. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, I think I guess... Vant is going to try and climb himself out of here using like the sword as like a push levy so he's like trying to walk himself up the dirt wall are you trying to climb up the dirt wall? yeah by holding uh, like the sword behind him ooh, so you're can... going to have to roll uh, at a disadvantage a strength check at disadvantage if you want to carry the sword with you oh no he's using the sword like uh, like a stick to leverage himself upwards. So he's jamming. Oh, the you're sword like jamming the, the sword and then like trying to use it. Yep. Uh, yeah, that would be like um, kind of like an ingenuity type of thing. So maybe dexterity. Yeah. Whatever happened to the good old climb check? They got rid of that. Yeah, 13. that became athletics or acrobatics. Yeah, acrobatics or athletics. Uh, yeah. So uh, you wouldn't do a save. Nope, um, yeah, it'd be like athletics or yep. uh, acrobatics. It'd be a, a skill check. Acrobatics. With either, either, it'd be the dexterity option, which I think is acrobatics. Fourteen. Yeah. Um, you're able to to wedge this this giant sword into the the in between these two because it, it's a pretty small space because it was encompassed around you. Uh, you wedge it in there, and then you kind of stand on top of the sword and stand on the edge of it. But you're still not tall enough. Uh, to, to, to reach the, the top, but you can call out and they might be able to hear you a little bit better than they would before. Um, and as you're doing that, as you get to like kind of a near spot where there's like four, there's like three to, how tall are you as a halfling? You a taller halfling? You're three feet? The small uh, three and a half feet. Three and a half feet. Yeah, you're three and a half feet. So there's probably like four feet. Uh, no, like probably more. Three, yeah, three or four, like four-ish feet between you and the top of this uh, this giant um, wall of earth that is in front of you. Um, and as you're like standing up there, um, Ardoth, can you roll me a one d ten thousand? Oh no, another high one. Oh yeah. We're gonna die before we even get out of the town. <laughs> yeah, you're not even ever gonna get to the quest. You don't uh, even know my name. <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't got his name. Nine three two six. Alright, nine three two six. Poor castle. I know. Uh Um, nearest cast castle fills with skunks. <laughs> all right, this doesn't affect you guys at all, <laughs> whatsoever. But this the camera pans over as 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 our halfling is climbing up this uh, this sword and and reaching up to try to look out into the into this hole that looks up into the sky and the clouds are coming over. And the camera pans out into the clouds, and as it pans out, you can see off in the distance a castle on top of a, a, a 
a tower or on top of um, a, a mountain. We zoom in on the mountain and all of a sudden you see people fleeing out of corridors and there's just black and white filling up from the bottom of the floors of this castle all the way to the ceiling and pouring out of the windows and some of them are like the butt of one of the skunks is like pushed up against a, win a stained glass window and squirts and you see like this this smoke this like gross green stuff falling out of there and then all of a sudden um you see a door open, swing open, and there's like 10 people who are running out. They're dressed in fine clothing, and uh, skunks just go flying out after them, and they're just running out of there, and the, the castle is just smells disgusting. And then we pan back over, and we have our halfling looking back up at the sky, and, the, and it goes back down. And it looks like we got raided by Shadowcast Network. How are you guys doing? Thank you for the raid. If you guys haven't checked out Shadowcast Network, uh, Shadowcasters Network, you guys definitely should go give them a follow. They do a lot of uh, Shadowrun content and things like that. They're a group of people who do a ton of different tabletop RPG content. If you're enjoying this, you'll probably enjoy that. Luckily, that didn't hurt any of you guys. You guys are fine. <laughs> <laughs> could, for now. could someone take me out? Buzz kneels down, like sets his sword on the ground and, and gets his backpack off his back, digs through it for a little bit and gets his length of rope. Okay. Yeah, you, you pull out some rope. And he swings it over the uh, the lip of the weird dirt, dirt cone thing. And Vand, as you're sitting there... um. Or as you're standing there, you're on top of uh, this sword. All of a sudden, something is... You can see something in the, in the earth that's in front of you. Maybe if you dug at it, you could get whatever it is that's in the earth out. Oh, it's, this is probably... It's vibrating evil, and glowing. I'm, there's a thing in here. Oh, I'm good. I'm going to see what it is. Then he starts clawing at whatever it is. Uh, yeah, give me, um... I guess it'd be like a melee attack, or like it'd be like clawing. So just a strength check, probably. Like a raw strength. Athletics, maybe? No, it's like it's strength, like pure strength. Acrobatics? No, it's like strength. You're not like acrobatic. You're, you're purely using strength. 14. 14. Yeah, uh, you dig into this earth and you, you're pulling at it. And as you dig one last bit, your little tiny halfling hands grab this red crystal that almost looked brown, but it's like glowing. And now you're holding a red crystal in your hand. Not sure what it does, but it is pulsating and glowing. I, and, I think I found uh, its heart. That item is brought to you by Quiet Geek, who donated $20. Let's change things up, magic item, and uh, has donated that. Um, I think we also get one more thing that's going to happen. I think that was Adoth that rolled. Uthal, Romeo 1D10,000. Not even there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You, you're there. You're a map right now. Sure. <laughs> uh, and thank you so much, Avenzi, for the 200 bits. If you're wondering what's happening right now, uh, if you look to the right of me, I don't know what it is for you, but for me, it's to the right of me. Uh, oh, we right. are raising money for St. Jude. If you do exclamation point St. Jude in chat, you can do all kinds of goodies in chat. Uh, $5 gives inspiration, $10 gives a natty one or 20, uh, $15 does wild magic, $20 uh, provides a magic item, and, and $30 is a new threat that appears. Um, and you guys can affect the game. Do read the descriptions um, because uh, you can't make up stuff uh, this time around. I am I nixed that because that got a little crazy. Uh, Eight thousand nine hundred and eighty-seven. That is that's a high Less number. Less than nine thousand. Eight thousand nine hundred and eighty-seven. Nine hundred eighty. All right, here we go. Oh man. Vegetation within one mile turns invisible. You're just turning everything invisible. What is with you, Nate? Why is everything going invisible? What the fuck? 
Uh, I'm a yeah. shadow sorcerer? Who's holding Nate? Band, right? <laughs> yep. Okay, Band. Uh, you can't see this because you're encompassed around an earth, an earth and thick wall. But everyone else, um, one mile, so it's like the whole village. It's only the village, basically. All around the village, um, you start seeing trees disappearing. You start seeing the grass on the ground disappearing. All of the the flowers are just slowly disappearing. It's like things are just popping out of existence. And anything that is a living vegetation is just gone. Also, this does not help you guys with your quest. Let me tell you. I was thinking that. Yeah. You're specifically uh, looking for vegetation. To that quest. Uh, but you're probably you have to go somewhere else for your your quest. Uh, it's not within one mile, so you're fine. But <laughs> like, if any of it is near your near that area, uh, that'd be funny. All right. Um, continue on. I'm sorry. I don't know where you guys go from that. That's <laughs> take it away. I I found whatever this things. I think it's its heart. It's beating. I... <laughs> what is that face, Nate? <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> you did like the perfect. You know when the emoji does the one tiny eye and the one big eye. You like did it perfectly. <laughs> Buzz just kind of impatiently like wiggles the rope, like tries to make it do like a whippy thing. Uh, did the rope get down the hole? Oh, you're throwing the rope over? Um, yeah. It'd be like a throw, so uh, like something dexterity, maybe um, it's acrobatics, right? I yep, think acrobatics is dex. Yeah, I think it'd be a raw dex. It'd just be you throwing it, so give me a raw dex check. All right. Yeah, 17. It goes perfect. Like, you aim it. It's like you were in the rodeo or something. <laughs> you you throw it over, and it goes perfectly in there. And Van, it lands right in your hand. And you're also holding the crystal that you're holding. So it lands, like, right in front of you, in front of the crystal. And before anybody does anything, stand alone. Roll me a 10, uh, or a 1D 10,000. And thank you so much, Werewolf, Werewolf said last time. Um, thank you so much for all of the donations tonight, Werewolf. That is amazing. Um, geez, Louise. I hope uh, it brings me back. What are we at back. for goal-wise? One second, I want to look at it. Is that it's really amazing? We are two thousand seven hundred and five dollars raised for Saint Jude. That is, um, you guys are fit, like it's crazy. Thank you so much. I yeah. So two thousand eight hundred and fifty-five. That doesn't seem as dangerous. <laughs> Who knows what it is? Let's find out. Eight hundred and fifty. High pipe. Ropes to snakes. Ropes to snakes. No. Nope. <laughs> oh no. So much better than ropes to snakes. That would be amazing if it just timed like that. Two thousand eight hundred and fifty-five. Um. You're you're standing. You throw this rope over, and uh, Bass, as you throw it over, your hair starts growing. Like you're, you're wearing your mask and your hair just starts growing and it keeps growing and growing. Um, 2,855, right? Uh, until it's two feet long. And then as it gets two feet long, it starts wrapping around you and it starts um, strangling your neck. And it keeps wrapping around your neck. So it's two feet long and it's strangling you and you're holding your, your hand up to it and trying not to choke. Uh, I, it's like a grapple, so you'd have to strength check, like a strength save to get out of it. All right. Yeah, you just kind of hear like... Yeah, you guys all see this. You see, uh, I, I mean, obviously not uh, not Vand or uh, Uthal, because Uthal, you're a map, and uh, Vand. Uthal, I'm also going to say that you're, you're a map. You know you're a map. You can't talk. You can't do anything. You're useless. You're a useless fucking map. But you can okay. hear and see everything from the place of which Vand is holding you. Vand, where do you have the map? Back pocket. Uh... You, you can see his butt, the <laughs> lining of his pocket. Uh, part of it's like sticking out so you can see like like some kind of weird wall and you can hear everything that's going on. Um, uh, so we can hear your inner monologue as a map. 
Uh, and so, Stan, uh, roll me a strength save. And if you get uh, any bonuses, like advantage or anything like that, let me know. All right. Uh, by the way, I, I love that uh, what Rage Strike put in there. <laughs> Someone asked how Uthal is a map. It's from Wild Magic. <laughs> His hair will have to resurrect him if it kills him. <laughs> Sorry, that's so funny as shit. We haven't even gotten to a quest. This is amazing. Um, a 14. I guess, like, does the hair... It'd be against yourself. So... A strangle. If you're trying to strangle somebody, that's like strength. Can you roll another strength save? To counter yourself because it's yourself it's your hair and you so roll me another one no, why is my hair so strong no you rolled constitution i did yeah roll a just a flat strength not strength save oh. not a save it's a it's a pure strength okay oh my god it yeah you are for i'll like i'll, I'll give everybody else uh, an action before you get to act again um but yeah it's strangling you um I'll look up how strangle works. Um, I don't uh, want to do anything. Grapple check. All right, what was that? It might be grapple. Yeah, but you're like choking someone. Yeah, but you can do that in the grapple check. No, no, I get, I get the grapple check. The problem is, um, if he's getting strangled, he can't breathe. So I'm looking up um, how that works. But anybody else want to do anything? You guys can all act other than Baz. Yeah, well, Ardoth, seeing this, is going to pull out his dagger and try and cut the hair. <laughs> okay, yeah. Roll me an attack on his hair. Tw crit. Wow. You, you, you finally <laughs> cut his hair. Yeah. Bad roll to good now. Roll. You, you cut his hair, and now... Uh, Baz, you're holding your hair and it lets loose and you can you can breathe again. <gasps> you gasp for air. <gasps> What's happening? <laughs> can I cast as a map? <laughs> That's actually a good question. Can he cast spells? Can you cast anything as a map? Oh wait, no, because my quarter staff was my arcane focus. Oh. Yeah, that that would make sense. I don't think you can. Yeah, I don't think you can do anything. There's something in play right now that will help you, but they haven't identified one of that things that they have. So you've gotten two magic items due to due to donations. One is from Quiet Geek, and one is from Werewolf. Um, we've also got Tech Priest Khan donating another fifteen dollars for magic wild magic, which I believe we're now on Vand. Stan, did you just do one? Yeah. Because yeah, that was a hair. Then yeah. roll me a 1D 10,000. I really love wild magic. This is kind of <laughs> fun. It's fun for a DM because you have to find like a creative way. It's like improv to like put it into play. Um, 4471. Okay. 4471. 447. Oop, it's down here. All right. Next creature target. Touches cannot thereafter be harmed by him. Ooh, okay. So, uh, next creature you touch cannot be harmed by you. So, if you touch the map, you can't. So, break if you want to take that, uh, yep. Frank Vervand, um, that is your your thing that you have. Meanwhile, Vand is wrapping the rope around the handle of the sword and stepping on the hilt of the sword <laughs> like you can pull me up now that is an awesome idea i love it yeah i'm not gonna make you roll for a check on that at all like uh you know to like put it right where it's gonna like kind of get stuck you know how to tie a good knot um you've you've actually uh you know, been on a boat before and um, some fellow had taught you how to like actually tie a proper knot. So um, yeah, you tie it ar around this hilt of the sword and you kind of stand on and you're holding onto it while also holding this crystal and you're like hugging it with your tiny little halfling arms. And you're like waiting for somebody to like <laughs> beam you up. And um, I think everyone has done something right. Baz, now you're not choked anymore. 
Now you all can act as, as freely as you want. You know, Vanda's kind of like the bucket in a loot well right now. Yep. Yeah, I, uh, Boz starts trying to pull him out. So, with one arm underneath, or one arm holding whatever this giant beating gem thing is, standing on the sword, using it as a, uh, essentially just a, a ladder step, holding the rope with the other arm. Um, yeah, if you're gonna pull, you're gonna pull him up. I think that's just a pure, um, like, athletics. Like, you're, you're digging yourself into the ground, you're, like, weaving it, you, like, do some pull. So, do me some, do me an athletics check. All right. Yeah, tell me how you pull this halfling out of um, uh, uh, an earthen well. <laughs> it's basically what it is. It's like a well. Yeah, uh, I think he like wraps the rope around his arm, pulls it taut, and takes like a low stance, and then just pulls him out. Yeah, yeah, you pull him out. As you pull him out, and Vand, you reach the top of the of the. The um, the wall, um, and you look down. You could you could probably jump it. It's only eight feet, so it's not too bad for you to jump down. Um, Ardoth, you feel something on your head. There's a there's a helmet on your head. You were wearing a cloak before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Underneath your cloak, there's like. A helmet on your head. Uh, and I think the next person to roll is. And rolled. Ardoth. Ardoth. Roll me a 1d 10,000. Uh, so um, the helmet is brought to you by Werewolf. Thank you for the $20 donation. And old Mr. Frodo is giving us the wonderful Nether Wild Magic. <sighs> You got, I love these wild magic. This, is, this has been really fun. I like it. I feel like I'm in like a weird improv class right now. <laughs> uh, 5,853. I hope you guys are enjoying this because I know it's not like the main quest challenge. And I feel so bad, Nate. <laughs> One minute. I'm a map. 5,853. This is just sheer. You can give us your inner mon monologue as a map because you're seeing all of this happening. Like, what What have they done to me? <laughs> what I mean, just done? in my back pocket. Um, the thing is, I have dark vision, so I can see all in your back pocket. You are unable to read unless you're exposed to sunlight. That's going to be <laughs> hard for you to be able to read unless exposed to sunlight. Uh, please write that, add that to your character sheet on your, on your features or whatever. Yep. That's gonna be a weird one for you because you're kind of you're a caster, right? You're gonna have to always, but you can spawn light. So I think, do you have that as your cantrip, one of your cantrips? No. Nope. Oh, you don't have light. You could totally, you could get light. I think you might have to get yeah. it when you level up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. That's cool. I like it. All right. Thank you, old Mr. Frodo, for the fifteen dollar donation. That's awesome. I loved the, the the hair tangle one though. That one was awesome. <laughs> I think that was the um, the one that Tech Priest brought us. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, so you're at the top of the thing, uh, Vand. Uh, you. Vand. Oh, no, like, uh, catch me. Roll me a perception oh. check. Oh no. Uh, Twenty-two. It says specifically sunlight, Frodo. I'll let magically light, magic light work for him. Because you can make magic light. A 14. Uh, with a 14, yeah, as you're saying something to somebody, I'll let you reiterate what you said. Um, but you, like, you're talking and you look around. All the trees that were there before, they were beautiful. There were, like, tons of giant trees. All the grass, all the flowers. You're standing up on top of an eight-foot-tall thing. You look around, and for miles in all directions, there is no vegetation. Yeah, Nate's just making everything invisible. 
<laughs> I think he looks he looks at Baz it's like hey you tall legs catch me Front, like gets ready to jump no this is looks towards Ardoth and as you what look you towards do? Ardoth Uthal <laughs> roll me a 1d 10,000 yeah I know that he uh, donated another one I was just I'm I trying to not I'm trying to make them be like timely so we get Spread some out. kind of RP in. Ooh, this was close Ooh, to the other one. That's close to the other one, so I don't have to scroll too far. Uh five thousand seven hundred and seventy eight. Does it make you not be a map anymore? <laughs> I Target is singed by a another. medium magic explosion losing. <laughs> <laughs> and he dies because he's <gasps> Oh my god! <laughs> Band! The back of your pocket <laughs> starts catch on fire. Um um, <laughs> Uthal, take eight HP. The t like, but you're able to. You're 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 like holding onto the crystal. You're able to grab the paper, kind of shake it a bit, and uh, it's not, it's not fully destroyed. Oh my god, this is the funniest <laughs> shit. Like, how is how oh, likely no, is it that finish. you turn it to a map and that you catch on fire? <laughs> um, fire, fire from earlier. Yeah, whenever there's a fire. Oh my god. Yep, fire. <sighs> the next fire, fire started in an open area opens a gate to elemental fire. All of a sudden, everyone roll initiative. Should I? Like, I mean, it? yes. Yeah, you're all going to roll initiative because okay. somebody can just basically how it works is somebody. I'm going to allow it so somebody can dispel you and make you not a map anymore. Okay. Dispel that magic on you. Um. Got that nat 20 for the initiative. <clears throat> the map just floats away <laughs> by his own accord. He's his own map now. I mean, whenever I cast, I do levitate up six inches. I think this is going to suck for you guys, because I think fire elements are challenge, challenge rating five, and you guys yes. are not level five. And that's challenge rating five for four people being when able one to kill isn't it. The map. Yeah, and one of them is a map, so... Uh, be rough. Um, yeah, so you all roll initiative. I'm gonna grab your initiatives really quick. Uh, this is very exciting, so uh, thank you so much. Exciting. Old Mr. Frodo, next person to do a skill test gets a natty one. $10 dono from Frodo. Ooh, I like that. It's good for me. <laughs> um, all right, let me. Um, a portal <laughs> opens uh, as you guys are. Um, Ben, you're shaking. You're still at the top of this this map, this uh, wall of earth. You're shaking the map while you're holding this giant crystal. Like the crystal's huge. You're holding a giant crystal, and you're like shaking this map. The map is now singed around the edges. Um, so you're holding a map. You're holding the crystal, and all of a sudden you look down there, and in the middle of the road, a portal spawns, and it's like a tear. It's this tear that rips open, and you guys see it like just a little red and orange slit, and all of a sudden it rips open, and out comes this f flaming elemental, and uh, it's going to roll its initiative, which is a 15. Um, so we have Uthal goes first with a, a 22. What would you like to do, Uthal? Uh, <laughs> my inner... My inner monologue will be, why am I on fire? Um, <laughs> and that's it? Yeah, you can ready an action. Like you could say, if I <clears throat> am uh, changed, if I've changed back from being a map, I will do a thing. Uh, you can talk okay. freely at any time. So you never have to wait for your turn to talk. Um, but obviously you can't talk as a map <clears throat> to like the other people, but you can talk like to us. Yeah, if, if I'm no longer a map, I'll cast Mage Armor. Okay. I like that. Um, and the next person is going to be Vand. What would you like to do, Vand? Um, is the uh, the dirt wall just a sheer cliff upwards? or Yeah, is it it's sloped? four feet thick now that you're sitting on it. So you can actually... It's like a chair. You're sitting on the edge of it. Um, it's eight feet tall. It's a circle. It looks. It's basically like a well. It's like a dirt well. Okay. And you're sitting uh, above it, and you could see in between you 
or you're in between like this tear that just ripped open and like this fire elemental is coming out. People are now rushing to the sides. Like people are running back in buildings. Some people are running back into the inn even though there's no roof on the inn. Uh, and then um, the rest of your party is like all standing to the side as one of them is like holding a rope and the other one is like touching his head. Well, map no longer on fire. Back in pocket. Um, going to try and get down this thing. So, it's a okay. very, very tall well. You're trying to jump down? Um, kind of slide my way down, if yeah, possible. Yeah, you slide your way down. It's an acrobatics check. Don't even roll it. It's a natty one. Uh, because... Yep, Frodo. Um, old Mr. Frodo, don't need a natty one for the next skill check, so you don't even have to roll it. It's a natty one. I didn't want that. You fall stuff. face forward. The crystal goes rolling out of your hand and it rolls towards the flame. The, the the map that you had also flies forward. Doesn't quite fly as far forward, <clears throat> but there's like in between you and this flaming creature and you're like flung towards it. You're actually like 10 feet within 10 feet of it. Um, I've just put you in danger. That's how much you failed uh, because you flew from the front of the the thing. Um, the, are the crystal and the and the map? 